Welcome to a lesson on writing quadratic expressions in the form a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So more specifically, we'll be given a quadratic expression in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, sometimes referred to as general form, and asked to write the expression in this form, often referred to as standard form, vertex form, or graphing form, though we normally refer to the form once we have equations, not just expressions. Looking at our example below, Notice how on the left we have an expression in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, and on the right we have the same expression written in the form a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So just to verify these are equal, you may want to multiply this out. Also notice how here we have the binomial x plus h, which means in this form h would be negative 8. Before we learn how to do this, let's talk about why this form is so important. Again, it becomes very important once we have equations rather than just expressions. For example, if we wanted to graph the equation y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, just by inspecting the equation, we can get a lot of information about the graph of the function. For example, the sine of a indicates whether the graph opens up or down, where if a is positive, the parabola, which is the shape of the graph, opens up, and if a is negative, the parabola opens down. Notice here, a is equal to negative 0.5, and the parabola opens down. And then also, the ordered pair h comma k is the vertex of the parabola, which is the high point if the graph opens down, or the low point if the graph opens up. Notice how here, h is positive 2 and k is 4, which gives the ordered pair 2 comma 4, which is the vertex of the parabola. It's also true, if we're solving a quadratic equation in this form here, notice how the left side is this special form, we can use square roots to solve for x by isolating the squared part of the equation and then taking the square root of both sides. And then more generally, if we wanted to solve this equation, we can use what's called the quadratic formula shown here, where in order to derive this formula, we would have to be able to write a quadratic equation in this special form. Now let's learn how to write a quadratic expression in this special form. So again, we're starting with the form on the left and writing the expression in the form on the right. So first, if a, the leading coefficient, doesn't equal one, we'll factor a from the x squared and x terms. Step two, we'll form a perfect square trinomial. Step three, we'll undo the value added to form the perfect square trinomial in order to maintain equality. And then finally, step four, we'll factor the perfect square trinomial. Let's look at our first example below. We're going to write the given expression in this special form here. But notice in this example, the leading coefficient a is equal to 1, so we can skip step 1. There's no need to factor a from the x squared and x terms. So step 2, we want to form a perfect square trinomial. So to set this up, let's write this as x squared minus 12x. We're going to add a special constant to complete the square here. We still have 49, and then whatever we add here, we'll have to undo to maintain equality. So let's write minus some value here. Now remember, to form a perfect square trinomial, we need to add the constant b divided by 2 squared, where b is the coefficient of the degree 1 term, or in this case, the coefficient of x. Notice here, b would be negative 12. So we're going to add negative 12 divided by 2 squared which would be negative 6 squared, which equals 36. So we're going to add 36 here. And then step three, we undo the value we added to form the perfect square trinomial. So because we added 36 here, we had to subtract 36 here to maintain equality. And then finally, step four, we want to factor the perfect square trinomial, which would be this trinomial here. So we should know this will factor into x plus b divided by 2 squared, and b divided by 2, notice, would be negative 6. So we are going to have the quantity x minus 6 squared here. But just in case we don't remember this, let's go ahead and factor it like we normally would, where we'd have two binomial factors. And then, of course, 49 minus 36 is going to be 13, so plus 13. Factoring here, we'd have x and x. The factors of 36 that add a negative 12 Again, our negative 6 and negative 6. So we have x minus 6, x minus 6. So in factored form, we have the quantity x minus 6 squared 
plus 13. So now our expression is in the special form. Let's look at another example. In this example, notice how a is equal to positive 5. So for step 1, we'll factor 5 from the x squared and x terms. So we'd have 5 times the quantity. We'd have x squared. Factor 5 from 30x, we have 6x, so plus 6x. And then we'll add some special constant to complete the square. We still have minus 12. And then notice when we distribute here, we'll have 5 times this constant. And therefore, to maintain equality, we'll have to subtract some constant. So step two, we want to form the perfect square trinomial. Notice here, the coefficient of x is 6. So we're going to add 6 divided by 2 squared, which would be 3 squared, which equals 9. So we're going to have plus 9 here. But then for step three, we want to undo the value added to form the perfect square trinomial. And because of the distribution, by putting a 9 here, notice that 5 times 9 would be 45. So to undo adding 45, we have to subtract 45 here. And then finally, step four, we want to factor the perfect square trinomial, which would be the trinomial here inside the parentheses. Again, because b divided by 2 is equal to 3, we are going to have the quantity x plus 3 squared. Let's go ahead and show some extra work. We have 5 times, we'd have two binomial factors. And then here we'd have negative 12 minus 45, which would be negative 57 or minus 57. Here we'd have x and x. The factors of 9 to add to 6 are 3 and 3, so plus 3 plus 3. So in factored form, we have 5 times the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 57. Let's take a look at one more example. Now for our last example, notice how a, the leading coefficient, is negative 4. So for step 1, we're going to factor negative 4 from these first two terms. So we'll have negative 4 times We'd have x squared plus 2x, and then plus the constant that completes the square. And we can distribute to check this. Notice how we would have negative 4x squared minus 8x. We still have positive 5, so plus 5. We need to be careful here, though, because a is negative 4, we know this is going to be a positive value here. But we're really adding a negative because negative 4 times a positive value is going to be a negative. So to undo that negative, we'll have to add a constant this time, not subtract. And now step two will form the perfect square trinomial. Notice here, b is equal to two. So two divided by two squared is just one squared, which equals one. So we're going to add one here to form the perfect square trinomial. Step three, we want to undo the value added to form the perfect square trinomial. Notice how by adding one here, though, when we distribute, we get negative four. So to undo negative 4, we need to add 4 here. In our last step, we want to factor the perfect square trinomial. So we're going to have negative 4. Now this one's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and write it in this form here. We're going to have x. And the factors of 1 that add to 2 are 1 and 1. So we'll have the quantity x plus 1 squared and then plus 9. We'll take a look at some more examples in the next few videos. I hope you found this helpful.